Hey guys, welcome back to Explore Electronics. Let us see the solutions for the model question paper 1 of advanced VLSI subject. Here I am going to give you the solutions completely and I given the link of the textbook also. You can please go and refer that to write the full answer for the particular question. And here since it is a theory subject, you need to write the theoretical answer more and also the relevant diagram and the steps clearly. The very first question is differentiate between full custom, semi custom and programmable ASICs, explain their applications. So there are two parts of the question here, uh, applications also carries two marks over here and full custom, semi custom ASICs explanation you can see here. In ASICs there are three types, full custom, programmable and semi custom. Again in semi custom standard cell based, gate array based ASIC is there. You need to explain this uh, with brief explanation at least five points for each and two, three applications you need to mention. And here you can see gate array and standard cell based ASIC is given. And in programmable logic devices, you need to give examples like automotive, consumer electronics, industrial application or in military application, aerospace, this programmable devices like FPGA uh, will be used. Then the second question is design flow of ASICs. In the design flow, there are nine steps here, starting from design entry, then synthesis, then partitioning, then pre layout simulation, please look at the numbers given over here carefully, you need to explain each and every uh, stages with what is the functionality over there. And after pre layout simulation is satisfied, if there is any error we need to redesign, otherwise we can do the floor planning, then placement routing, uh, circuit extraction, then post layout simulation will be done. Again, if it is there any mismatch, we need to uh, do the floor planning again. This is how the flow will be and this is since it is for 7 marks 3 marks or 4 marks will be for diagram or the flow diagram and remaining marks will be for the explanation you need to explain each and every block with some 3 to 4 lines explain the significance of booth encoding in multiplayers using an example so here the booth encoding is explained for radix 2 method uh, if radix 4 method is required please search in the net or refer the textbook for example here some example is taken 6 and 3 for the multiplication and how the shifting and subtraction will be done is shown over here and also here they have asked to write the significance so the highlighted answer you can see reducing the number of uh, iterations and faster multiplication and lower uh, area requirements can be achieved using both encoding need to be explained then discuss the importance of data path logic cells in CMOS design so related to data path some examples like adders are given in the textbook you can mention these uh, mention that and also the what are all the advantages and how data path logic is very important in system uh, CMOS design need to be explained please refer the textbook for this for more information here I have added uh, some part of the answer then discuss the working principle of carry skip carry select carry save and carry bypass adders here it is for seven marks and four adders are asked and each and every adder carries uh, two to three marks. Here the sufficient explanation and the uh, relevant diagram is given. You can refer this for carry skip, carry select and also carry save and carry bypass adders. Then what is the role of IO cells in ASIC design? Explain with an example. So the role of ASIC uh, IC cells is the first question. So you need to explain what that IO cell is going to do. How, they, how it is going to uh, interconnect or interface the logic of the chip with the external signals. And one example is given over here, it is an output buffer, tri-state buffer. How the tri-state output will be achieved with M1 and M2 operations is given over here. Then coming to module 2, what are the goals and objectives of floor planning? Describe the steps involved in uh, power planning during floor planning. Here the first thing is to say, what is the goal of floor planning first and the objectives is given over here in the points and then different uh, power distribution levels is shown over here and also this diagram give you the idea of how the different uh, power distributions are going to be made with respect to the IO pads are concerned and you can see the explanation over here. Then explain the min cut placement algorithm with an example. Here this min cut algorithm need to be explained with an example so please refer to the textbook the textbook link is given in the description the same example you can take and explain it clearly uh, to get six marks this is the uh, answer for that 
you can also go through this particular uh, uh, point like a 16.2.4 section of the textbook the link is there in the description then explain the channel definition process of floor planning and its importance here also uh, just the diagram is uh, shown uh, please refer to the textbook for clear cut answer for this then what are the goals and objectives of global routing in physical design explain global routing methods with example so the goals and objectives are to minimize the total interconnect length maximize the probability that detail router can uh, complete the routing minimize the critical path delay and the global routing methods need to be explained so again go to the 17.1 uh, from the textbook uh, link given in the description and explain the iterative placement improvement technique with its relevance in the physical design so the iterative placement algorithm uh, is asked here uh, we need to explain that technique and how it is relevant in the physical design so here the brief answer is given it is a part of textbook only and also please refer to the textbook for clear cut answer for this then how the partitioning and back annotation are used in the floor planning and how to uh, to improve the timing and reduce delays this is the back annotation topic uh, taken from the textbook again please refer these sections then coming to module 3 explain the verification process in vlsi design discuss the role of functional coverage and enhancing the uh, verification process so the basic process of verification you need to write it first here uh, that is like generating the stimulus apply the stimulus to dut capture the output that is response from the dut check for the correctness and then measuring the progress against verification goals so these are the five steps of the basic verification process in vlsi then functional coverage is asked so functional coverage is a very important uh, thing in verification to get to know how much functionality of the design is checked by using the verification uh, stimulus so you need to explain that also the, it has two parts so three three marks will be allocated for uh, verification process and also the functional coverage discuss the role of constraint random stimulus in design verification so here also there is a figure given here this indicates uh, one more figure is there in the one more diagram is there like this in the textbook if you refer that clearly shows how the directed uh, random uh, directed stimulus and also the uh, random stimulus is going to give you the uh, difference so here you can uh, write this diagram and say these are the directed tests and uh, there is some test overlap is there and how actually it will be uh, advantages when we are going to use constraint random stimulus and this is the second figure indicates how to achieve the complete coverage using constraint random stimulus then explain the use of associative array and queues in system very lock this is a very important question associative array or dynamic array will be there in the exam for sure so here uh, associative array stores the entries in a space uh, space matrix it means continuously unlimited uh, uh, memory it will allocate we can say so we can use star this star indicates a type of index here it can be any data type index uh, we can use suppose if any array uh, it will be uh, storing only the indexes of string type you need to represent string over here so these are the different examples and also how we are going to declare initialize and using those associative arrays example is shown over here then uh, the next part of the question is q you can see here in the associative array we are going to use a star mark or we will be writing the type of the index but in the q we will be writing a dollar symbol this indicates a q declaration that is the only difference between uh, the indications at the time of declaration and queues are going to be uh, use different methods like push pop methods that you need to explain over here you can see push front push back is there so please refer to the example and clearly understand what is going on here uh, these examples are much required to get the full marks then write and explain system error lock code snippet using associative arrays again associative array question is asked uh, it is very important that's fine so you can see the associative array brief introduction again and then a code snippet is asked here a three arrays is taken one is having index int second one is string and third one is string type so by using this how the initialization will be and how actually you are going to uh, get that in a display you can uh, show and then how are fixed arrays and dynamic arrays are different in system very 
Fixed array means it will be having a fixed size like uh, 0 to 15 or uh, 16 number of elements you can uh, see over here like this. And also you will be uh, having multi-dimensional arrays you can give as example for the fixed array. But in the dynamic array the size will not going to be defined at the time of declaration. When we are going to use it the memory allocation will be done. It is shown over here in this uh, example you can see. So this kind of clear cut explanation and the difference you need to give here. Since they have asked what are the different, uh, uh, how we are going to use the fixed arrays and the dynamic arrays, how they are going to be different in the system very log. So clear cut, so clearly you need to give the difference with respect to examples. Describe the process of type def and user defined structures in system very log. So type def allows us to create uh, and define new data types. Okay, this is the example here given and also you need to explain the structure, how it is used in the system with log and also give the examples over here, some codes you need to write since it is for 7 marks. Then coming to module 4, differentiate between task and function systems in system with log. Here some points are given, these points are, uh, some 5 points are given, these are very much important and sufficient to uh, write the differences. And also one example of how the task is defined and what is the functionality within that need to be explained. Similarly for function, here a bitwise operator task is there, it will do the bitwise and operation or and XR operation. Similarly in the function, I have given the parity calculation uh, example as a function, we can explain this uh, to get full marks. Then describe the significance of separating the test bench and design in verification. So for this also please refer to the textbook, here you need to clearly uh, say how the test bench and design is going to be separated, how the teams are going to work for the design and test bench in the industry perspective. Since it is for 6 marks you need to say what is the part of design and what is the part of test bench. Then write and explain a system with log code that integrates an interface with assertions to validate the basic logic circuit. So here are the uh, stepwise coding and the related comments also given, you can clearly understand if you go through this and in the in your answer please don't write this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you can write the comments and also the code is sufficient, please go through this, this is also very important for the examination. Explain the purpose and structure of interface construct in system log. How interface is used in system log means to communicate between the test bench component and the DUT, there is an interface. So here you need to explain the interface logic first, how the interface is going to be defined. It is not of type module or class, it is a interface type itself and the signals of the DUT are going to be represented with logic and there is a concept of mod port and uh, clocking block that also you can explain it over here. And discuss the uh, stimulus timing and its importance in system lock test bench. Here actually you can explain the clocking block more. Uh, clocking block and mod port more. In the previous question also you can explain the same thing but with respect to timing here they have asked so you need to uh, clearly say about how the clocking block and the clocks are going to be useful in the interface. Discuss the role of assertions in system relog provide example of immediate assertion and concurrent assertion. This is also a very important question uh, it, it may be asked in the exam also. So immediate assertion how actually it will be executed and concurrent assertion how actually it is executed is uh, shown in the example given over here. You can refer to these examples and write the same thing in your exam. Module 5, module 5 is about randomization. What is randomization in system log is the first question and explain how random number generators can be used for generating the constrained inputs. First you need to say what is randomization, how random values are going to be generated for the inputs while generating the stimulus. Then you can take an example like this and show how the randomized function is going to be used to generate the different uh, uh, random values and you need to see, uh, show one constraint over here. You can see constraint C is defined. This constraint and some condition in the constraint need to be explained with uh, some example like this. Then only the second part of the answer uh, carries full marks. Since it is for 10 marks, you need to elaborate or give multiple examples like this. Put one more constraint for DST data also. Here only for SRC we have a constraint over here. Then illustrate the use of cover group with a practical example. Explain how 
cross coverage analysis the verification process so first you need to see how the cover group is uh, defined and useful in uh, setting the cover points and then explain about the cross coverage here some code snippet is given with respect to basic uh, cross coverage then 10th question explain the strategies for improving functional coverage during simulation so how the functional coverage can be improved during the simulation is the question there are some uh, points over here you can see and also the, there is a diagram when there is a uh, start of the project there is a low functional coverage and the code coverage when we are going to add these cover cover points and cover bins the uh, coverage is going to be increased you can see over here then explain how automated bin creation in system error log enhances the efficiency and accuracy in functional coverage analysis here also you need to explain the cover group and the bins uh, first they have asked about the uh, automated bin creation in system error log and you need to explain how it enhances the efficiency and also the accuracy so this is the answer you need to elaborate this again you need to explain more about the cover group and the bins how it is used and how the automatically uh, it is going to uh, divide the range of cover variables and creating the bins third question is explain coverage types with necessary example this is a uh, general question asked on coverage types code coverage functional coverage and assertion coverage and again in the code coverage line coverage path coverage toggle coverage and fsm coverage can be explained since this is for four marks just point wise explanation uh, like half page of answer is sufficient so this is about the answers for the model papers and also please refer to the textbook link which i have given in the description for asic part and for the verification part also i will uh, put the link in the description you can go through those and write the detailed answer so that you will be getting the full marks thank you